Hello everybody and welcome to Unity 2D Tutorials for beginners. In this episode we're going to talk about gizmos and their usage in the editor along with other tips that can help you make your project more organized. Let's go. First of all I want to explain what gizmos are. Gizmos are basically a, a graphical renders that can show in the editor and is used for debugging and you know indications. It only shows in the scene view not in the game view and it's mainly used for uh, developers to detect whether a specific thing is in the right place or is it detecting with de colliding with other stuff properly so it's purely debugging and uh, I'm gonna tell you what we can use it for we have our own character controller and then uh, we're checking the ground detection and we also have something else called overhead detection ground detection is you know detecting whenever you're standing on the floor and overhead is the detection of hitting the head of the character while crouching to prevent him from standing up so let's get inside the script what we need to do okay that was something okay all we need to do is we need to have one thing in mind there are two types of gizmos that we're gonna use but I'm gonna actually use only one of them there's gizmos that shows all the time and there's gizmos that shows only when you select the object and they are like this in gizmos oh, sorry gizmos draw so on gizmos draw on gizmos oh, come on gizmos draw selected so on gizmos draw on draw gizmos sorry it shows the gizmos the word gizmos when you say a lot it sounds funny so i'm going to just talk about gizmo so the first one shows them on the object all the time whether you click on it or not and it's used for uh, it's good for indicating uh, uh, positions of stuff while not holding that object. But this one on selected which we're going to use, it only renders when we click on the object, with, which is the fox. You can read a lot about it in the Unity documentation, but I'm going to explain like two simple stuff which is useful for here, and then it does the whole purpose. What I'm going to do is, I have my ground check which is this empty object in here and it it has what is it called like a radius if we go to the script it has a 0 0.2 if I remember yeah it has 0 0.2 float radius which checks if we're actually colliding with something but the thing about it is we don't see it in here so we need some sort of a, like an, a graphical drawing that actually indicates that okay this thing actually is in here there's stuff like this in here, but these things are only mostly for a, you know, just indication where is it um, stationed. But in Gizmos, we can define the radius, the size, and all this stuff. So to do this, it, we only need two things. We need to assign the color of the gizmo and draw it. So what we're going to do is we go gizmos.color. I'm going to select yellow. All right? And then if we go back in here, And I want to check one thing. So there's a lot of types of gizmos in here. Gizmos has different shapes. You can put a circle, you can put a square. It all depends on what you want to do. So for the ground check, I remember we have ourselves a circle. And it has that 0 0.2 radius. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle in here. Gizmos that draw circle oh, draw sphere yeah sphere <laughs> so what, what you need from this you need to assign the position and the radius so position we have it I think it's called check ground collider yep that position and the radius is check ground radius and that's it that's actually everything that we need to do and then we, we'll be able to see the results only when we select the object that has the script. So if I click Fox, you can see here there's a tiny small circle on the bottom and which is in the same place as this ground check. Which is cool. That's exactly what we need. So we have this. We have another one that's actually checking for the overhead. And we're gonna call it overhead glider and overhead radius. And this is also used to detect whether there's a collider on top of us while we're crouching 
you see that that's everything that we need with this gizmos it actually helps a lot to actually detect where we can have more debug reasons to actually see that all right we have this object that actually track gets here i want to know if it actually touches the floor so we know it's the floor and i see the script it's fine so everything is good in simple matters that's the gizmos use it only for debugging in the unity scene and that and uh, that's for that the second thing is scripting optimizing the script so let's minimize this one of the stuff that you need to do while programming whether you're a programmer or designer and uh, is to have your script be an readable and understandable readable is fine because you can read stuff and of course reduce as much clutter as you need something you don't need just delete it don't leave it otherwise it's, it's gonna compile up and become a large pile of working script with a lot of unneeded lines we're gonna start with the fields and for me personally I have two ways of organizing the fields the first one is separating them by type what that what that means is if it's a float it's I, I gather them up together if it's integer together boolean together unity components together so what I do is the first part of the fields I, I put it as unity components whether it's an animator transformer collider uh, sprite uh, layer mask uh, anything that relates to the components of the unity which is built in the second thing is anything that is numerical so I have all these floats and integers in here and I put them together then I have booleans in here you can organize them uh, however you want uh, this is only one of my ways of uh, putting them together the other one is separating them by accessibility for example putting all the public in one place and the uh, private in another place and you can also sub organize them inside also what I like to do is I have I like to have all the fields doesn't matter which type they are put them grouped up depending on their functionality for example you see this ground check and ground layer and the ground check radius like these are all uh, relate to the ground checking and one thing you can do about this stuff is adding something called header ground check so what this does it adds up in the unity editor a header like basically a title that can put like you can see on the right side ground check and it all these stuff are ground check so what you can do is you can have this in here ground check and you can have this thing I don't know like a, a crouch for example and then you'll have a separated elements in here which can help you or other people actually want to use the scripts again they can know what where what's what goes where and of course the biggest one is comments comments are really useful even for you uh, say you have a game and then uh, you finish the whole game but there's a possibility of uh, putting a, an expansion or, or some bug happens you know after a week or months some bug has been found you you want to you want to be able to get back to the script and then without getting confused because even even if you created the whole script from the ground up there's a chance that you're gonna get loot lost in some of places because you'll be working on something else so the easiest way is to have, to have comments and uh, it really helps having comments like is it grounded check because it helps you and other people if want to work on this stuff and uh, what else what else and uh, something else that is gives us the easy the, like the easy way of handling uh, components that are in the script in the inside the editor and one of these stuff is let's say you have uh, let's talk about this one. we have the jump power right and I want to make this thing available in the editor so I can change it whether me or my friend who's a designer who wants to change this stuff there's a lot of ways of doing this and it all depends on how you want to build it for example I want the jump power to be private because I don't want other scripts to access it and that's really helpful when you work with a big team that you can um, elim uh, you can eliminate that thing where someone by mistake changes that thing like that exact value which happens you know like everybody makes mistake and uh, the only thing is to make it private you can make it public 
for example, let's look at this. We have the available jump. Let's make it public. So having available jump as public will show it in here. Like in a second, you'll see you have available jump and also you have total jump. What the difference is, this one you can see it in the editor as well as changing from outside this script. So you increase its scope. I'm going to keep it private. While this one, it's it remains inside this scope of the script, but it becomes more serialized. Uh, not more, it actually becomes serialized, so you need to can understand it and sh show it in the GI of the editor. I mean the inspector. This is a really uh, useful approach, quick one, but there's also another one that uh, you can do it, but it's, uh, I mean, it all depends how you want to do it. For example, let's say I want to check is grounded if it's working, right? But I don't want to make it public or serialized, I just want to check it. So what, what we can do is we can click this button, click debug, this one on the top, not inside here, the one next to the lock in here, in the same level of the debug, sorry, in the same level of the inspector. You go here, by default it's normal, we make it debug, it has more uh, detailed values of each script, and you can see here, Everything that's not grayed out is public, the others are not. For example, you can see the jump value in here is grounded, and you can get the results as if they're public. I mean, not public, as if they're visible. You can see is grounded is true. If we jump, it's not. Now it is. These are some tips about how to deal with uh, variables in uh, Inspector. And the last one is uh, having regions. For example, uh, what I like to do in, in the script that I like to group up multiple methods in a one region that can help me you know make the script less you know cramped for example what I like to do is I like to keep unity methods at the top like the awake start update fix update late update everything here and then I have this stuff in here right like I actually put this stuff up here so what I can do here for example let's say I, I want to group this stuff together into a region called jump. You have to make two th two things. You have to start with the hashtag region and then write the title region and then end it up. It's mandatory to end it up with the end region. And basically, you can close it like this. That's it. And then uh, you can have you can put a, like five to seven scripts in here uh, methods in and close them up so you can have an easy way of handling scripts and. Uh, that's uh, that's everything I that comes to my mind right now, and then it this helps you up with uh, a lot in the uh, you know in a post development part. Like uh, you want to edit things there or stuff, it's easier to get back to this and then edit the script. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll be have you'll be having a much easier way of uh, editing whatever you've done before. With all been said, uh, I hope you enjoyed this and it has been beneficial for you if you did if it did please hit the like and subscribe for more uh, interesting uh, tutorials and other content uh, and if you have another questions or anything else hit the comments below I'll try to, to respond as much as uh, as fast as I can uh, and uh, from here all I want to say is uh, see you in the next one bye bye